home Depending on the mode Might bend your back for my own Satisfaction My distraction Losing sleep She said I'm handsome Evergreen Whole state is dabbing We ain't violent We eat and napping Get it cracking Like eating ass So sit down girly Please relax If you need a hand Then take a dab And then bounce your back Bounce your back Sugar coated Wicked temptation Me and you Need some medication You my Tootsie Roll, Coco Motivation For that cherry pie, I will run a hundred miles Sugar coated with your temptation Me and you need some medication You my Tootsie Roll, Coco Motivation For that cherry pie, I will run a hundred miles I will run a hundred miles Welcome to the 2020 Spokane Arts Awards. I'm Emma Noyes, and I'm so excited to be here right here in Lucky You Lounge virtually, um, coming to your screens. And I'm here with our ASL interpreter, Jamie DeArmas, and Darian Mack, my co-host, our DJ for the evening. He goes by Rose Throw. Tonight, we'll be sharing performances from a small slice of Spokane's amazing creative community, reflecting on the year and honoring a wonderful group of artists and arts organizers Arts, or arts organizers with the arts. I am here to prove that we are live. Thank you so much to the Inlander. Thank you to Lucky You Lounge. And thank you to everyone that is tuning in tonight. Let's get started with a dance from the Spokane Chinese Association. Hi, my name is Mary. I'm the captain of Spokane Chinese Dance Group. Today's performers are Ming, Chantel, Hi. Mia, Hi. and me. The dance we are going to perform is called The Misunderstanding of the Kite. The Misunderstanding of the Kite is a legend drama written by Li Yu, an opera writer in early Qing Dynasty over 350 years ago. With a kite as a driver of the plot, that eventually led to a happy marriage. The tale weaved a beautiful love story, full of coincidences and misunderstanding. It reminds us an everlasting truth that the love is so precious and should be cherished and pursued despite any obstacle. Thank you. Please enjoy. Song, 风
Hello, I'm Garrett Daggett, current Spokane Arts Commissioner. This has been a year of incredibly difficult challenges and also inspiring change. Local theaters have shared plays and moved festivals online, while galleries and museums invited people to virtually access exhibits from the safety of their own homes. Creatives across disciplines came up with thoughtful and inventive ways to share their work and create connections. We've seen beautiful new murals painted, supported our favorite restaurants, and reimagined some of our favorite traditions. The coming year will be filled with continued need for creative, thoughtful approaches to big challenges. We need art and the community it builds now more than ever. I'm heartened by the Spokane Arts community's proven ability to adapt and grow to meet whatever challenges the year 2021 brings. Thank you and have a good evening. Tonight we're here to celebrate the hard and beautiful work being done by the entire arts community. Especially this year, there is so much work that goes into sustaining our creative community that happens behind the scenes, in individual studios, in offices, in kitchens. The Arts Awards nominees represent a glimpse of the full picture of important and powerful creative work being done. Nominees were submitted through an open public call and anyone in the community was welcome to submit a nomination. Eligible nominees are recognized in four categories, collaboration, imagination, inclusion, and leadership. We are thrilled to present tonight's winners with awards created by Gina Fruin. Her sculpture can be found at Trackside Studio Ceramic Art Gallery. Thank you, Gina, for sharing your beautiful work. Remember that this is just one way to celebrate artists in our community. Everyone needs encouragement from time to time. So if you encounter someone's work and you love it, send them a note, let them know, reach out. Your words might just be the inspiration that they need. Before we announce this year's collaboration nominees, let's hear a song from the 2019 Collaboration Award winner, Jenny Ann Mannon, singing her song, the other side of the hill. Every day feels just the same, like everything and nothing's changed. Is there any place where things are better? You want to throw your windows open wide. You deserve to go outside. The sunshine is as bright as you remember beside the river. You've been alone. You've been lonely. There's a vacancy no one else can fill. Follow the road. Follow the melody to the other side of the hill. you felt 
set free as you should be. You've been alone, you've been lonely, but there's a vacancy no one else can fill. Follow the road, follow the melody to the other side of And the winner for the Collaboration Award goes to... Wait a moment. Please let me tell them a little bit more about the Collaboration Award. I just really wanted to let the audience know. I know. know. I know. We're just so excited. We're going to jump the gun. (laughs) The Collaboration Award recognizes those creating supporting partnerships, sharing resources, finding shared solutions, and working with others to create meaningful work arising at a shared goal. Here are the 2020 Community Nominated Collaboration Award nominees. What I love most about collaboration are the opportunities for lifelong growth in an exponential fashion. Everybody that's involved in the projects gets this domino effect of one person has a conversation that it leads to an idea which leads to maybe an event or maybe a roadblock but we figure it out and it just presents exponential growth for everybody I like the sharing that happens um I like the give and take I like the unpredictable nature you never know what's going to happen when you team up with somebody right and most of all i like the the growth that happens in me as an artist and as a person introducing our folk, ethnic, and international artists at our free festival to new audiences results in wonderful collaborations for the artists, the audience, and everyone else involved. It is very rewarding. It's the intangible spirit um, of it all that makes it so special and the connections that were made um, and watching you know, the artists support one another. Collaboration was a magical aspect of this entire process and it was really beautiful to watch unfold. The idea can start as a seed and then collaboration is really, you know, the soil, the water, the sunlight that help it grow. Everyone played such a, a big role in their own way. Artist collaboration is so exciting because I feel like each artist brings their own unique experiences and their artistic journey to the table. And when we can prioritize everybody's strengths, that's when we get the best result. And honestly, we try and do that every single day within our team. We prioritize collaboration, and that's how we get the best result. I strive to be a leader by guiding those uh, people, our chef and their families in the kitchen uh, and help them with the food preparation process to meet uh, uh, our customers' requests and to meet all requirements, uh, give some advices and help them sometimes with the language. All right, and the winner for collaboration goes to Carl Richardson. In addition to his own fantastic artwork, Carl's work in the fine art department at Spokane Falls Community College and his collaborations with many local arts organizations, including Emerge, Terrain, and Saranac Arts Projects, and others, have made him an invaluable part of our local community. This year, Carl was a part of the collaborative effort that went into creating the Black Lives Matter mural in downtown Spokane. A project led by building owners 7-2, and 14-4 and organized by Ginger Ewing of Terrain. The mural is an important addition to our community. Thank you, Carl, for your collaborative work that has helped grow and inspire our whole community.
And this, and this. We are mountains, we are rivers, we are cities and farms. We are young, and we are wise. We are rugged individuals seeking quiet, seeking incredible noise. We are one community, united together. We are the people of the Inland Northwest. We are Inlanders. The Inlander, we're here for you. some poems from my forthcoming poetry collection called Self-Portrait with Cephalopod. It'll be out in February from Milkweed Editions. When I stepped on the mouths of other creatures, I did not apologize. Here, the world strips itself to kelp, teeming with flies. It comforts me, knowing gulls will pry a locked shell until it gives. I found a barnacle latched inside a barnacle's mouth, fastened to its own kind. I took it home, cradled in tissue for the journey, then startled at the sea stench when I unwrapped it. I'm a blood cage, the sort of creature who looks for God when I feel my brain spin out from my body. I think there's a tree leafing out in my throat I never considered what the end of my life would be like, my grandmother said as I wheeled her down the corridor. I consider it constantly, in every cliff where roots strain to hang on, every chamber spiraled with sand. First the snail died, then the crab. I offer my finger to the anemone's blind suckle. I can't feed anything. The tide carries its living and its dead together, lets the shore reveal and retreat. When does the body become distinct from the mind? We know the exoskeletal breaks. Clog of leaves. That word corridor, so much worse than hallway passage, permanence, forsake, forsaken. We blame the ocean, whether or not the ocean is to blame. Darian, I love that video. Thank you. How did you and Kat create that together? Yeah, so that was, as you saw, stop motion. Uh, stop motion is a crazy long process to, uh, to achieve. Um, but instead of taking photos, we just did a long, like five hour video. And then I took stills out of that as she would move and then step out of frame and then move some more pieces. And so the animation looked pretty, pretty seamless. So it just was a, a nice little collaboration. That turned out incredible. Imaginative work is all around us in Spokane. With the Imagination Award, we celebrate jaw-dropping creativity, sky's the limit approaches, and energizing, inspiring, and innovative ideas in Spokane's artists and creatives. Let's see this year's Imagination nominees. 
How I would describe my work would be hopefully different and ideally visually weird. That's the goal. What I'm most proud of is our production team, as well as the people who are interested in being in production, whether that's in front of the camera or behind the camera. All of it helps and it just fuels the creative atmosphere. My style is bold and feminine, influenced by my love of nature and my lived experiences as a mother, a cancer survivor, and as a Korean American. I am most proud of recently fulfilling my lifelong dream to become a full-time artist. I write strange short stories set here in the Northwest and uh, my work has been tremendously shaped by the input and influence of my peers here in Spokane. Um, I'm incredibly proud to be part of the robust literary community here in this city. I would describe my work as imaginative, very innovative. Uh, I'm pretty proud of the way that I'm able to cross genres. I draw a lot of inspiration from my musical background and uh, really inspired by my father. I would describe my work as abstract with an emphasis in pattern and texture. Other highlights of my work include vivid color and recently an exploration in muted color. The thing that I am most proud of to date is my contribution to the Black Lives Matter mural in Spokane. If I can give a dull space some vibrancy that creates even the slightest positive change to our community, then I feel like I did my job. Color and shapes can't always be communicated verbally, so when I see that communication through art, I feel the sentiment from the artist. So I'd say that I'm at my proudest when I hear that I'm the one that created that impact. It motivates me to contribute more every time. I would describe my work as creating a bridge between worlds, East and West, traditional and modern. I strive to push belly dancing to new heights as a highly respected discipline while still honoring its traditional origins. I would say I'm most proud of bringing this underrepresented art form to the Spokane area through my studio and my dance company. To answer your question, what am I most proud of? It would have to be um, helping to bolster and bring awareness to our local farmers markets. When I first moved here, there were probably only one or two 25 years ago, and now I think there are seven. And I'm just really happy to be a part of that. All right. And the recipient for the Imagination Award goes to mm, Sylvia Fontaine. nationally celebrated blog, Feasting at Home, Sylvia uses her gorgeous photography, writing, and recipes to take the bounty and beauty of our local food and agricultural communities and elevate them to show-stopping heights while still keeping everything approachable, adaptable, um, and easy enough for us to make at home. There is so much amazing creative work happening in the culinary arts in Spokane. And Sylvia has been an important imaginative force in our community for years. Congratulations, Sylvia. Let's enjoy another song by Jenny Ann Mannon, 100 Ways to Beat the Blues, from her 2019 album, Carnies and Cowboys. Sometimes I forget All the faces I've seen All the songs I've sung But then I close my eyes And the light breaks through And I've got a hunt I've got Mark O'Connor, he had a curse. 
Kershaw And Doug had his mama Rita I've got Dwight Yoakam He had Buck Owens And Buck had that boy from Tacoma Casey has Willie and Allison Dolly and Loretta Lynn So she's got a hundred ways To beat the blues My fiddle and bow Tell a story of the old days Sometimes I get feeling low And lonely when I play But then I recall All that we've been through Just like Kerouac had John Steinbeck and Steinbeck had Walt Whitman and Walt had the songs all King David songs and David had Jonathan and John Hartford had Huck Finn Had Monroe and Flat and the Scrubs and the Stanley Brothers and Towns had Guy and Charlie had Ira Hank and a dozen others and Randy Howard had his friends. I'm lucky. Johnny always had his tune So long as I have you I've got a hundred ways To beat the blues Across Washington, science, heritage, and the arts inspire communities. We are 17,000 organizations, countless creatives and workers driving 8.4% of Washington's GDP. From restaurants and hotels to Lyft drivers, many other industries count on us. We were the first to close, but have worked hard to continue programming, and we need champions like you. Sustain your community's cultural life by adding your voice. Join the Inspiration League today.
With the Inclusion Award, we are honored to celebrate nominees enacting just and diverse community, building bridges across divides, and finding proactive approaches to accessibility and inclusion. Inclusion and in arts, to me, really goes hand in hand. I think inclusion is a form of art and vice versa. The role of Spokane Poetry Slam in our community is really just to open up this space for any and all voices to be heard and listened to. Inclusion is more than just inviting diverse voices to the table. It's actually seeking out marginalized and often brutalized communities who have never even been invited to the dining room and amplifying their voices so that their stories can be told. Inclusion to the team at Stack is about more than just a buzzword. It is about the reality that we are building, a world in which any person from any community can show up to any production anywhere in the region and see themselves, their families, their culture represented in an equitable and respectful way on stage. I think inclusion in the arts is about acknowledging the whole of the artistic community to ensure that the whole story and the whole truth is being told while continuously challenging the status quo and redefining what art is today. Not only considering who and what is represented in our arts community and showing up for POC artists and trans artists and disabled artists, but also considering uh, resources and spaces that we're allocating for our underrepresented and marginalized artists so that they um, can create and survive and thrive and continue to thrive in our communities. Our students attend public, private and home schools. Also, we provide tuition assistance for families in need. And finally, our conductors and coaches are professional musicians, many of whom are members of the Spokane Symphony Orchestra. Inclusion to me is simply storytelling, accurate storytelling. Showing humility by allowing the subject to guide me to their truth. It means asking questions about the issues that matter to them. The winner for the Inclusion Award goes to Spokane Poetry Slam. Spokane Poetry Slam has served Spokane as a welcoming space for people of all ages that want to share their words on stage. From local events to representing Spokane Poetry Slam community at national events on national stages, Spokane Poetry Slam has been an important part of our vibrant poetry community in Spokane and creating space for poets of all backgrounds to share their work. Spokane Poetry Slam is an important, consistently safe and welcoming space for LGBTQIA individuals, especially youth. And they've worked year after year to welcome and elevate voices that often go unheard. Thank you and congratulations to Spokane Poetry Slam. Now let's hear from local business owner and musician, Patty Tully. I'm Patty Tully, owner of the Baby Bar and Nito Burrito. This year has been challenging on a scale we have not yet faced before. For many creative businesses and organizations operating on razor thin margins, the loss of income has been devastating and the reality is that some of our beloved organizations will be forced to close or change forms. Some have already been forced to make that choice. Our city is better off with places like the Richmond Art Collective and because the pin existed. We all feel the holes created by their absence. I'm sad and stressed and uncertain of my own future with my business and the future of many others. But I take comfort in the fact that so many in our community are dedicated and thoughtful and creative people already working to reimagine what Spokane can be. When we come out on the other side, I look forward to pouring you a drink. Cheers. Safely. I'm growing fond of you over distance And tomorrow I'll be here Coming home for you, dear
so excited I can hardly wait. I, I am so excited to get to introduce New York Times bestselling author Jess Walter to share a sneak peek at his new, soon to be released novel. Hi, I'm Jess Walter. I'm a local author, and uh, thank you, first of all, for supporting the arts and artists in Spokane right now. It's a tough time for everyone, but for artists especially, I think, uh, to come together like this for the Arts Awards um, means so much. So thank you, and uh, I'm here to talk about my new novel, The Cold Millions, which comes out this October um, and is my ninth book, my seventh novel. I'm going to read a little bit from it, but first I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Cold Millions, uh, which I worked on the last few years here in Spokane. It's, uh, it's a Spokane novel. It's set in 1909 during the free speech riots, a time that echoes the period we're in now with uh, social strife and rioting and, um, and the kind of income inequality that I think for a lot of us is one of the biggest issues that we battle today. Uh, as I started to work on the book, uh, that was one of the things that drove me, the echoes of the inequality and the battle for fairness and justice that are gripping the country right now. But also, um, I was driven by writing about Spokane can at this period of time, 1909, which for me was one of the most vibrant periods in Spokane history. Looking back at a time when the city was doubling every six or seven years in size, when uh, there were still horses and cars on the road at the same time, when the city was becoming a modern and, uh, and central place in the country, but was still a sort of rough western town. Uh, and this period felt to me like such a great moment to write about, um, almost like the show Deadwood, if you could imagine 100,000 people living there. So I started writing about uh, 1909 Spokane and settled on these characters, Gig and Rye Dolan, these two brothers, um, itinerant workers, what we would call homeless now, what they called hobos then, who came by train to Spokane. Uh, and the novel also features two other characters that they meet, Ursula the Great, who is a vaudeville singer who performs on a stage with a live cougar, and Elizabeth Gurley Flynn, a real historical figure who led the free speech riots for the industrial workers of the world, the nascent union at the time that represented everyone, no matter who they were. Uh, and the fact that Spokane was the center of these um, of these protests um, just really struck me. The novel also features a bunch of other characters, and I'm going to read just a little bit from one of those characters now. Um, people who, pe who come into the story in various ways. And this is one of my favorites, even though he's um, a bit of a villain. It comes from midway through the book, but his arrival in Spokane is one of my favorites. He's a detective named Del Delvo. And Dell is a Pinkerton, uh, a private detective hired by the mining companies to rough up union workers and others. Uh, and his arrival in Spokane and his arrival in the novel was one of my favorite bits. Um, Dell uses um, sort of arcane language. He's British and he uses the sort of 19th century language of, that Brits used. And so uh, the word that first struck me with him was the word morbs. As I was doing my research, I found out that this was a word that people used to to use to describe a sort of morbid mood that they would hit. And so Dell's first line, Spokane gave me the morbs, was almost like meeting that character in person. This is Dell Delvo. Spokane gave me the morbs, right blood blister of a town, six month millionaires and skunk hobos and none in between. Spokane, a gilded carriage passing by peasants bathing in the very river they shat in. Last place I wanted to go, but the job was the job, so I packed three shirts and I lingered a minute over which barking iron to take. In the end, I went small, loud, and kicky, the 32 Savage Automatic. I caught first class Denver to Billings, my first day sober in a month, spent crossing Montana, then two hours over the Idaho panhandle toward the Washington border, and that's when that old morbid voice rattled up. Careful, Dell. At Hope, I slipped the porter a buck for a whiskey, then another when the train slowed the last five miles, forest, foothills, farms, and finally Spokane. 
I couldn't believe how the syphilitic town had metastasized. Smoke seeped from 20,000 chimneys, pillars to an endless gray ceiling. The city was twice the size the last time I'd hated b being there. A box of misery spilled over the whole river valley. I was half rats by the time we settled in the train station. That voice again, go home, Dell, you don't need this. But my doctor wasn't likely to take my reputation as payment. You can do this, I said back. Two years of Pinkerton, ten more with Allied, and twenty of freelance, I had survived worse. And the money was good. The kind of money I hadn't seen since the mining wars. This Lem brand offering me prime pay. Dear Detective Delvo, my associates and I would like to inquire. And it was a bit of my old station in the letter, too. But I also suspected the job lived on the outskirts of what I was willing to do. And I'd done plenty. Undercover with the Molly Maguires in my youth and the Unionists in middle age. I had broke, beat, and buried men. Spokane had a fancy new train station since I'd been through, built on an island just this side of the falls, three stories of brick and optimism. On the platform, I made the mistake of looking up, and a ripe ass told me that I was gazing at the biggest clock west of Chicago, 155 feet tall, with four nine-foot faces. The ripe ass also said Spokane had the biggest beer hall in the world and the biggest theater stage, too, and I fancied shooting him in the teeth if he didn't shut up. I can suffer any fool, but a booster turns my guts. You know what else you should see while you're here, he said. Is it only you, I said, or is every man in this town an insufferable ass? Before he could answer, a thick lug and a driver's cap stepped forward from a line of porters. He stared at my nose. A lot of things a man can hide, but not that grog blossom map of life. Mr. Dalvo, he said, please follow me, sir. I stepped after the driver, but I noticed his socks were silk. His arm swung cufflinks. Good Christ, this tiresome business. A fancy monger pretending to be his own driver, cap and all, reaching for the bags like a servant. How to play it? Get rumbumptious or let him have his fun? I went down the middle. Didn't want him to play me, but I didn't want, but I didn't want him kanked yet either. Thank you, Mr. Brand, I said, and he looked surprised over his shoulder. I liked the defeat on his face. His racket was queered, and he carried my bags. How's that for a red nose, muffin guts? He muttered some rot about safety and anonymity, but I could tell he just wanted to reveal himself like some posh magician. Look, it is I, Lemuel Brand. So that's the Cold Millions. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for supporting Spokane Arts and for supporting all of these great artists. And I'll see you out on the road in October at Book Tour. Um, thanks again. For nearly three decades, the Inlander has connected you with this place. In celebration and hardship, we are all Inlanders. And now, when we need each other more than ever, we're still connecting you to everything we love about this place. The Inlander, we're here for you. They live in a can, oh yeah, in a can It's where they go to school And when they're done It's where they go to work And where they have fun Siding, siding, siding If we're shares, we're fish ass We'd all be doing the shares Cause I wish for the shares Who I wish for and I have been volunteering with Spokane Arts Commission since 2014. In the face of sudden and widespread cancellations this spring, which you are probably familiar with, artists, performers, and freelance creatives were among the first to feel the devastating impacts of COVID-19 on our local economy. Canceled gigs and opportunities meant like a loss of income to pay rent, buy groceries, and provide basic survival needs. But thanks to your generous donations, combined with Spokane Arts funds, the Spokane Arts organization was able to provide over $50,000 in emergency relief grants to local artists. Those grants went to mu musicians, 
tattoo artists, photographers, makers, visual artists, writers, performers, and other creatives. Uh, we're really so grateful for the ways that this community has rallied and supported one another. And Spoken Arts is gonna to continue to advocate for more financial support of individual artists, venues, cultural organizations, and creative businesses. Thank you to everyone who has donated to the Spokane Artists and Creatives Relief Fund. Let's keep taking care of each other. What's going down? Echoes. Headphones. I know what it is. I know what's in there. Yeah, 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 kid. Uh. In addition to the relief funding, the relief grants that Spokane Arts distributed this spring, we're excited to be able to share more grant options for funding right now. Applications are open now with the deadline of October 1st for arts relief grants funded by City of Spokane CARES Act funds. These grants are for individual artists, small and large organizations, and creative businesses. The applications are very simple and should only take you 15 to 30 minutes, so don't delay. Apply. We're on to our Leadership Award. The Leadership Award celebrates positive and consistent advocacy, excellent stewardship of resources, arts role models, and those finding creative solutions to challenges. Thank you to our leadership nominees for your important work in our community. Leadership is about empowerment empowerment of self and empowerment of others towards reaching a common goal and the greater good. Successful leadership isn't about what can I get, but rather what can I give, how can I help? The One Heart Native Arts and Film Festival strives each year to lead in that goal and continues to create a platform through which Native arts and storytelling can be shared. What makes a good leader is to help someone access and see possibilities that they couldn't have on their own. Leadership skills and their skills, they can be learned just like uh, tying your shoe or playing volleyball. All you need to do is find the people or the institutions that know what they're doing and follow their lead, uh, listen to them and practice those skills. For us, it's a matter of helping artists and organizations reach a wider audience with their work. To me, a leader is a servant at heart. Chinese Association, a 100% volunteer-based nonprofit organization, brings culture and art enrichment to the community. We work hard to bring culture diversification to the Inland Northwest. Leadership to me is connecting people and opportunities and creating programming that serves the greater good. Leadership to me is the attribute of understanding my own strengths and weaknesses and surrounding myself with those who not only complement my strengths, but each other's as well, and then giving them the freedom to do what they excel at. I always assumed that, that business owners didn't like this kind of thing, because there's kind of a feeling that graffiti art shows social decline. But, you know, that's just kind of a old-fashioned kind of a thing. So I just started asking, and people said yes. Leadership means to me looking at the past, the now, and then working on tomorrow to create more inclusive and equitable community. This is particularly important to me with every art organization I volunteer for. By listening, discussing, then doing, can we truly create a positive impact on our community, and in particularly in the issue of accessibility. My hopes is to create a tomorrow where Spokane's expression through the arts is coming from the entire community. Last but not least, the winner for leadership goes to La La Land. I'm kidding, that's a super joke. It goes to Juan Moss. Through his 
Countless years of dedicated work serving so many of our local arts organizations, Juan has had a huge impact on our local community. A founding member of the Spokane Film Project, 50 Hour Slam, and the Spokane Theater Arts Council, and a board member of the One Heart Native Film Festival, Juan works tirelessly as a mentor. He fosters collaboration and learning opportunities and helps create opportunities for filmmakers and creatives in Spokane. Juan has been a significant driver of cross-disciplinary artistic collaboration in the arts, bringing together organizations and individuals on all kinds of exciting artistic collaborations like Meet the Makers series and music video jams. And he does all of that work for the arts community while also being a director, screenwriter, and producer of film and television in his own right. Congratulations, Juan, and thank you for everything you do. I want to introduce now Brooke Kiner, chair of the Spokane Arts Governing Board to prevent, present a very special honor. Hi. I'm Brooke Kiner, Chair of the Spokane Arts Governing Board. On behalf of Spokane Arts, I'm so glad you've joined us to celebrate creativity in our community. During the pandemic, we've all relied on the arts to sustain and comfort us through music, film, books, podcasts, even learning new culinary skills. The importance of culture in our daily lives can't be overstated which is why we're glad to continue the tradition of the annual Spokane Arts Awards to honor and celebrate artists and creatives who give our lives meaning and fill us with joy. This evening, I have the honor of presenting a very special award, the Karen Mobley Impact Award. This award honors artists and advocates whose impact on our cultural community has been deeply and widely felt over decades. We don't give this award every year, it is a special honor reserved for those whose contributions to arts and culture are significant beyond words. Impact Award honorees are people who've elevated the arts in Spokane, supported and encouraged other artists, and exhibited all the qualities you've heard about tonight. Thoughtful leadership, collaborative spirit, a commitment to inclusiveness, and a dazzling imagination. It is my deepest honor to celebrate the work and life of a brilliant artist whom we all miss deeply, Kate Vita. Kate's father was a World War II fighter ace who was shot down over the Pacific and floated in a life raft for nine hours before he was miraculously rescued by a, a passing destroyer. Um, he always maintained that everything after that in his life uh, was gravy, uh, you know, a bonus. And for whatever reason, Kate had that exact same sensibility. Um, she loved life with more genuine passion than anyone I've ever known and was sincerely grateful for every moment of it. Kate's husband, Richard, once said that Kate was always trying to weave color into her life. And I love this comment, and it strikes me as being so true about Kate's commitment to vibrancy. I think we can often associate color with rainbows and ribbons, cheer and goodwill, um, but I think Kate saw color with much more complexity than that. I think she used it to capture brightness, but I also think she used it to explore gravity and depth and mortality and vulnerability too. What she prized above all else was her relationships, connections with the people in her life. And that's what her art was all about, was about connections with people. She had some unfulfilled desires, uh, one of which was acting. Spokane became a, a, a safe, accepting, supportive environment for her to finally explore those things. She was fearless and she, she didn't want to stay where she was. She always wanted to grow, move forward, be better, try things that she was afraid of. 
I always used to tease her about going all Sally Fields on anyone who praised the wonderful work that she did. But if she were here now, that's exactly what she would do. In lieu of that, uh, on behalf of myself, our two daughters, Helen and Nevi, and anyone else who truly loved Kate and her work, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight in honoring Kate Vita in celebrating our 2020 Spokane Arts Awards and just really coming together to support our arts community in Spokane. Thank you, Rose Throw. Thank you, Jamie. And to close the night, please enjoy some more sweet tunes and the rest of the crew. Conversations about dividends, keys to the city, they giving in. Young paper boy, he a man now. Used to run up for them bands, now I just collect the check in advance. And I'm the one, the one to get behind. Follow me, I'm your king, king of the night. I feel no other man who be like I Django that nickel. Get home. 